today what we're going to be doing is we're going to um, be, you're going to be given linear equations that are not in the form y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to show you how to then solve for y to get it into the right form so that we can identify the slope and y-intercept and graph. So our learning for target for today is I can solve a linear equation for y, then graph. look at an example um, so you can see what I'm talking about. This example is going to be pretty straightforward. Here's a linear equation. You may have noticed by now that all linear equations have graphs that are lines. That's why we call them linear equations. Now this is not the form that we're used to. So to be able to see the slope and y-intercept, we need to solve for y. Basically, our goal is to get it in the form of y equals mx plus b. Basically, solving for y. So we're going to treat it like our multi-step equations that we have spent so much time solving. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, we're going to solve these just like we would a multi-step equation. So the first thing I want to do is simplify each side completely if I need to. So that's what I'm going to do. So I want to distribute this negative here so that we no longer have grouping. So this will be negative x and then a negative, negative two will be a positive two. It basically just changes the sign of each thing inside the parentheses. And then I'll bring everything else down. Now, because I want y all by itself on one side of the equal sign so I can get it into this form, I am gonna subtract three from both sides. And I will get y is equal to, bless you, negative x, and then 2 minus 3 will be negative 1. So we did it. We reached our goal. We got it solved for y, and it's now in this form. So we can identify the y-intercept and the slope. So when I look at this, my slope... Remember, if there's no number there, we assume it's a one. So our slope is negative one, which we can write as negative one over one. I do that intentionally because I want you to remember that that top number is the rise, how much you're gonna go up or down, and that bottom number is the run and to keep things straight, you're going to want to make sure that you always run to the right, like you read a book, okay? But if it's negative, you're gonna go down. If it's positive, you'll rise up, okay? So that the negative impacts that top one, whether you go up or down. And now we can also see the y-intercept is negative one. So now I'm going to use that information to graph it. It can be a pretty small coordinate plane. We don't need a whole lot of space on this one. If you're a little, if you're not sure about graphing using the slope and y-intercept, I'm gonna talk you slowly through this, okay? The first thing you're gonna do 
is plot a point on the y-axis where your y-intercept is. So in this case, your y-intercept is negative 1. So you're going to find your y-axis and put a point at negative 1. Now my slope is negative 1. And when I write it like this, you can see that you're going to be going down 1 because it's negative and over 1. And you're going to keep repeating that pattern. So my rise is negative 1, so I'm going to go down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. And I'm just going to repeat that pattern a few times so that I have enough points to create my line. And there it is. Yeah, Maddie. Well, we just assume that your run is always positive. Oh. And if, it's, if the slope is negative, you're going to go down and to the right. If your slope is positive, you'll go up and to the right. Yeah, but you sorry. always go to the right. Yeah, right. You never go to the left. Yeah. If it's negative, you just go down. If it's positive, you go up. But we always go to the right, and it keeps things straight. Yeah. Don't put the negative in the denominator. Put it in the numerator. Yeah, so that it's always affecting the rise instead of the wrong. Dylan? How is the y-intercept What's that? How is the y-intercept um, Because it's, you're subtracting one, and whenever you're subtracting one, we take that whole shebang with us, and we say it's negative one. If it had been plus one, then the y-intercept would be positive one. You guys have great questions. You ready for another? Okay, I'm going to show you a different example so you can see how it's done with a different problem. All right. I know why it started working suddenly. They were changing those air filters yesterday. I wonder if they did something when they put the new filter in. I don't know. Okay, so we're going to solve for y here so that we can see our slope and our y-intercept. And I'm going to turn this sheet down so my hands will see. simplified at all. They're already in their simplest forms. So let me walk you through this. We want to get y all by itself. So let's get rid of this whole term right here. I am going to subtract 7x from both sides. Now this will be gone and I'll just be left with negative 4 y. Now these cannot be combined. What's that? I was going to say don't worry. Do you figure it out? Why am I subtracting it? Is that what you said? No, I know why you're subtracting it, but they can't be combined. Right, right. yeah. You can't be combined. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question, Green? Yeah. Okay. Um, so when we write this, I like to have the x term first so that it can, um, it can make, I can see the slope easier because we want it to be in this form. So I'm going to put this term first, so negative 7x, and then put this term second, like that. Okay. Now we're well on our way. We still have one thing happening to your y that we need to get rid of. So we're going to, the opposite of multiplying by negative 4 is dividing by negative 4. Now, whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an equation by something, you have to do it to the whole side. So that means I'm going to divide the whole side by negative 4. And what I'm left with is y over here. And then this is like 
parentheses. You can distribute this to each thing. So negative 7x divided by negative 4 will be a positive 7 fourths x. Negative 28 divided by negative 4 is a positive 7. So what that means is my slope is 7 fourths. And this is my rise on the top, my run on the bottom. And it's positive, so I'm going to go up and over. Then, um, then this is my y-intercept. Is seven. And now we have all the information we need to graph our line. So I'm gonna do that. I'm actually gonna make my graph pretty big and I'm gonna put my um, like put my x-axis way down here because if your y-intercept is seven and then you're going up another seven that's gonna be a really big graph it's gonna take up a lot of space all right so my slope is seven fourths and it's positive that top number tells me that I'm gonna go up seven Oh, sorry, I have to put my y-intercept first, which is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now my slope is 7 fourths, so I'm going to go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then run 4, and I always go to the right, and I'm going to put a point. Now I like to have at least three points, so I'm going to do that same pattern in the other direction. I'm going to go down 7 and over 4 like that using that same pattern. And then I can connect it to make my line. Yeah, Elizabeth. Um, when you do the slope part again? Okay, the slope is 7 fourths. So the top number is my rise. The bottom number is my run. Since it's positive, that means I'm going to go up. So I go up seven spaces, and I go run or go over four spaces and put a point. What about the really low one? Well, I just did the same pattern in the other direction, so I had a third point. Oh. So if you look at this, this is seven and four, just like this is seven and four. Okay. Before you get started on your practice, I want you to do two questions on your notes so that I can walk around and help you. And then your practice will be for, you can start your practice after that. Okay, oh yeah, sorry, you can't really see that. Okay, there you go. So go ahead and solve for y for both of those and find your slope and y-intercept and your graphing. I feel like I need to turn that heater down even more.
please let me know if you guys have, need any help on this or you're not sure about anything. This is the best time for me to make sure you're good to go before you leave for the day. Okay, once I've simplified this side, I can subtract one from both sides. And I'm gonna get y is equal to negative two x plus five. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna show you the work on the other one too. Um, Cause I don't know that we're gonna have time to graph it before you guys leave. I'm gonna move this whole term over. so that I am left with nine y is equal to nine x plus 54. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by nine. And I'm gonna be left with y is equal to x plus six. All right, let me know if you guys have questions tomorrow. those graphs, well, this graph will look like that. This one I changed from the last class. The y-intercept should be 6 and go down like that.